إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Welcome all of you brothers and sisters to Pillars at Dar al-Quran in Arlington, Texas. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path and continue to guide us. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us with knowledge. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live on La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah die on La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and to be resurrected on La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. We are talking about Ayatul Kursi, the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah that is referred to Al Kursi, translated to the chair, referring to the kursi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, he is over the throne, stawa ala al-arsh, as he subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. And the kursi is the place for his feet, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the verse or it is one verse, and it has so many names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know Surah Al-Kursi is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Surah Al-Masa'ah, uh, Surah uh, Al-Samad, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ We know that this surah describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat Al-Kursi also describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hay Al-Qayyum, as some of the scholars said. So, this is a great ayah. We will talk, inshallah, about the greatness of that ayah, but I want to follow up the benefits that we took from the story that we talked about last time between Abu Huraira radiallahu an and the shaitan. We know that Allah subhanahu, wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, entrusted Abu Huraira to take care of the uh, zakat al-fitr, which is the zakat that you pay after completing the month of Ramadan to purify your fast and to uh, feed the needy people. He was in charge of guarding that before uh, it's distributed to the needy people. And the shaitan came in the form of a human being three times, and he was stealing. He got caught three times. He always asked Abu Huraira to forgive him. He has family, he has children, and he is very in need. So Abu Huraira anhum, let him go. The third time, Khalas, he wants to take him to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to rule for him. On him. He told him, I will teach you something. You will get rid of me, basically. You will never see me again. It will protect you from me. So he accepted Abu Huraira and he taught him Ayatul Kursi. So every time Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked Abu Huraira before he even tells him someone comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he tells him, what did your friend do? Or rather, what did the man that comes do? What did you do with him? Then he tells him, I let him go the first time, the second time, the third time. Uh, he taught me something and he claimed that it will protect me. So he told him, Sallallahu uh, he told him, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he teach you? He told him, he taught me Ayat al Kursi. So he said, Subhana Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sadaqaka wa huwa kadhub. He told you the truth even though he's a liar. 
So this story, what do we learn from that? We learn that the person you entrust is called wakil. So wakil is like the wakil for the girl when she is to get married. She has to have a guardian, someone uh, that he is entrusted to choose the right person for her. And usually that is the father or anyone from that uh, lineage, from the men's side, from the father's side. So this is Wakil. We learn that Zakatul Fitr is collected at the end of Ramadan and to be guarded and protected because it is the property of the needy people. As soon as the person pays it, it's no longer to anyone, it belongs to the needy people, all the needy people. We learn from this that the shaitan can take shapes, shapes of a human being or an animal. He sees us, but we don't see him. But whenever he takes a shape, he is just like whatever that shape is. Before he transforms to another shape, if you kill him, he gets killed. Contrary to, or the opposite, to angels. Angels take shapes too, but you cannot kill them. They don't die. This is shaitan we're talking about. We're not talking about Iblis. Iblis is the father of all shayateen. He does not die because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him to the day of judgment. We learn also that shaitan speaks. He takes the shape of a human being and he speaks. And they speak in languages. If you're English, speaks English, Arabic, whatever language is, he speaks that. I'm not saying that each shaitan speaks all the languages. It's like you live in America, you learn English, and you live, there's no difference. Yani they are uh, just like us. Uh, they have Muslim, they have Kafir, and they eat, and they drink, and they marry, and just, just another uh, yani creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent to. He was sent to a human being, and he was sent to jinn. So they speak the language, and you can actually talk to them. You can talk to them and speak with them, and that is not a strange thing. Yani, uh, if someone tells you that, it's not a lie. Also, we learn that they eat and they drink, and they eat and drink from the human food, from our food, the food that we don't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on. If you eat and you don't say Bismillah, that's what they eat. What kind of jinn? Shaitan. Good jinn? No. Because they're Muslim. But the shaitan only eats from the food that you don't say Bismillah on. We also learn that, or maybe this is a, an addition also, when you go to the restroom, a barrier, we said that they see us, but we don't see them. A barrier between them and our privates, private parts, is saying Bismillah. So we are commanded or advised by the Prophet wasallam that when you take your clothes off, to say Bismillah. And before you go to the bathroom, before you enter, you say Bismillah, and you make the dua, and that's why you say, uh, what's the dua? A'udhu billahi min al-khubth wal khaba'ith. Khubth is uh, explained by the scholars as impurities or male shayateen, male jinn. Khaba'ith impurities or female jinn. Either one perfectly fits. Shaitan lives in dirty places. That's where anything uh, in, in the walkway, 
in uh, bathrooms, uh, trash places, all of that. That's where the shayateen, they love filth. And that is, why, that is why you say you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because shaitan uh, can harm if he wants, if you are not protected, if you're not, uh, you did not uh, guard yourself by Ayatul Kursi, the one we're talking about. And that's what he told uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh. He told him, if you read it at night, protects you all night. If you read it during the day, protects you all day. So reading Ayat al-Kursi protects you from that. And of course, with that also, Kul huwa Allahu ahad, kul a'udhu bi falak, kul a'udhu bi nas. That also protects you from uh, the shaitan. In this uh, ayah, we, uh, in this story, we understand that the stealing person or the thief, his punishment, if the robbery met the uh, correct number that is assigned, if you steal, your hand is cut. And that is why Abu Hurairah radiallahu an told the shaitan, I'm going to take you to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, basically to establish the rule on him. And you can only uh, get the punishment or deserve the punishment if you stole the right, the proper amount set by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, plus you steal it from a safe place. Like if I have some money here on the table and you take that. It's a theft, it's a robbery, but it's not a safe place, so you will be punished, but it's not losing your hand. But if you have it in a safe, if you have it in a drawer inside your house and someone broke in, this is considered a safe place. So, he did not take him. We also learned that they steal. They see us, they talk, they speak our language, and they steal too. And that is what he was doing. Now the brother is going to say, hmm, uh, they can uh, rob us then all the time. Well, number one, you have to understand that when someone does something, that doesn't mean they do it all the time. That doesn't mean uh, your prayer, your dua, your Quran, all of those are protection. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns angel to protect us. So you have a lot of things to protect us from the shayateen. Otherwise, we would be destroyed. Someone can see you, you can't see him, and he doesn't like you anyway. We will be doomed if there are no angels who they will protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah al rad لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Scholar said that there are angels in front of you and behind you protecting you from uh, يعني protecting you from harm unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant for that to happen. So you could say then how they get to someone and possess someone or harm someone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed on that person he will be possessed or he will be uh, yani, uh, robbed or stolen by them which means they get away with it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant it this way similar to before shayateen used to steal the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to command something he says it to the angels near him and then the angels will say it to the angels lower than them until it comes to the worldly sky or angels in charge of the worldly sky until it goes all the way to the messenger. Uh, of course, unless it is uh, يعني, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, but it, it goes, it goes يعني, from uh, angels to angels. It is a sound that is spoken. This is like me telling you something. Shayateen used to hide and steal listening to the command, whatever they can get away with. Before it was easy 
or easier than now. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created meteors that is, or we call them shooting stars. They go after every time a shaitan is trying to steal, they go after him. But they still get away with some. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu told us when a magician or a palm reader or witchcraft and all of that, they deal with magic and such, when they tell you something, they tell you, they may tell you 1% true and 99 untrue. Yani, they lie. And that is a quality for the shaitan. He told Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, I want to teach you an ayah, it will protect you. Was he right? He was right. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Sadaqaka wa huwa kadhub. He told you the truth, but his habit is lying. So the shayateen lie a lot. And that's where uh, you need to be careful. Yeah, and if, uh, a lot of people claim or might be possessed, and they go to a sheikh to read on them. And the sheikh gets to talk to the jinn. And the jinn promised certain things that I would leave him or I would do such and such. That doesn't mean he's telling the truth. Just like dealing with a human being, investigation. You're investigating a person who's a liar and he continues to lie. Uh, why am I saying that? Because it is dangerous when the shaitan, when, when someone... Uh, when the jinn say something about you, for instance, let's say that the sheikh uh, asked uh, and he told him, uh, you know, this is magic, uh, put in that person. Uh, the sheikh would say, uh, who did it? Then he would say, his uh, aunt. Now the person goes to his aunt and turns the world upside down as if he received a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the case. Yani, yani me personally, I, I don't deal with that. I don't. Yani I attended some lectures or, or some uh, real life uh, situations with a sheikh. Yani I, I've seen that with my own eyes. Uh, even I talked to them personally. Uh, it happened to me without knowing, without planning. I was just put in that predicament, and thank God I. Uh, did it before or saw it before so I knew sort of what to do uh, I was in Jordan and we were uh, on a trip and I was coming back to Amman and there is uh, a view on top of the mountain that people or tourists they go there and they take pictures and all that and I was doing that the same with my children and my brother who doesn't believe in jinn and uh, magic and all of that doesn't believe at all so I was taking pictures and my brother keeps saying Sheikh, Sheikh, uh, answer her answers her and I said who who I got angry and he said she wants to talk to you I said now I said yes sister and she came and she said basically read uh, read on my son a lot of people come and say read uh, Quran or something it did not dawn on me at all that we are talking jinn or anything. Just read. Where is your son? Uh, he was sitting uh, on the uh, edge, and that's a big cliff down, and it's, it's, it's very high. And there is no wall or anything, and he was just sitting there at the edge. So I went to there and uh, to him, and I said, Salaam Alaikum, brother. Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. So I was holding his hand like that and I uh, put my hands in his hand and I just proceeded Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm al-Din he starts squeezing my hands then I remembered I said oh boy <laughs> what am I doing here now I followed what the brother did, you know, you have to pin him down. He was sitting, so I grabbed his hand and I put them on the ground, and he, like that, and I continued reading. And then he was like trying so hard to, 
to get up, and he was, uh, I started talking to him. I mean, I, just out of the blues, I said, I'm going to say something, and I don't know what happened, so I've never done it. So I said, what's your name? And he told me his name, and who are you, and all of that. Basically, he told me he is uh, a Jew. I called him to Islam, and I asked some of the questions I asked him, you know, uh, maybe I will interest you. I said, why are you doing what you're doing? And he said, uh, I was asked. And I said, by whom? And he said a name, and I asked the lady there, who is that? And she said, that's the wife of his uncle. Okay, and I said, what do you know about her? She said, well, she has four children, and they're not good. Yeah, they're not uh, doing good. And I have one son here, and he is, mashallah, doing good. I guess I, I'm not going to believe or disbelieve, but if anything happens, it's jealousy. One of the things I said, I said, how much she paid you? He said, 50 dinar. So I told him, how about if I give you 50 dinar and you leave him? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, your money is not good. Because they need filthy money, bad money. Money you pay the care and all of that, it's not going to work. <laughs> I one of the silly things that I said, and I said, and what good would it do you? I mean, where are you going to buy? He said, we have our own shops. Uh, my son, I mean, my brother, couldn't believe. I mean, he was listening. Couldn't believe what I was saying. Anyway, he was sitting, yani he is sitting on the ledge, and his uh, feet hanging here, and my brother was close to his feet. And I told him, you know, I called him to Islam, and he accepted Islam and all of that. And I told him, you need to leave. And he asked me, where do you want me to leave from? When I watched the other brother, he told me they leave from the hand from here or from the toe, big toe. So I told him, <laughs> leave from the toe. <laughs> and, and who is there? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> the funny part is, uh, he was fighting, I and mean, it wasn't like a relaxed scene. You know, he was talking and screaming and yelling and all of that. And then the uh, the mother told my brother, "Hold his feet, ya <laughs> khalti." He would not even get near. <laughs> Especially tell him. He said, "I've never, I've never." seen this or believed in this until today. My son took a video. Unfortunately, he uh, deleted it because he took it without my permission. He thought I would be mad if I knew so. He deleted it. Uh, because I said, I said, how come you uh, no one took a video or anything? I said, I did, Baba, but I deleted it. I said, why did you do that? He said, oh, I've I thought that you would get angry if I do that. So the idea, uh, yani the, the whole thing uh, boils down, alhamdulillah, he accepted Islam. Now, I don't know how uh, truthful or how sincere that is, but the idea is they do that, they talk, and they uh, possess people, and they lie. Uh, generally, they lie, so you should not uh, just believe them unless there are some... Uh, Yani, uh, tangible uh, things that makes their story correct. And in this case, the, the mother told me that his uh, uh, uncle's wife uh, is really jealous. Yani, really, she, she shows that and she does that. So it could be uh, true for doing that. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heals them. Anyway. <clears throat> So we also learned from this one that shaitan knows, and a lot of people know, but knowing does not mean you're going to benefit from what you know. And that is the shaitan, he has the knowledge, but no benefit because he did not accept Islam. Uh, wisdom 
can be known by a bad person, but he doesn't benefit from it the same way because he doesn't act upon it. And a lot of people have too much knowledge, but they also don't benefit from it because they don't act upon it. Uh, Ayatul Kursi, as we said, it protects you from shayateen and it protects you from them uh, yani, uh, whenever you change or whenever you go to the restroom. Uh, we also learned from this that you should accept the excuse of the person more than once or twice if their story yani, appears to be truthful to you. We cannot follow the rule one, two, and the third one, it's over. As we can see, Abu Huraira radiallahu an accepted three times from him. First two times because of the need, the last time because of seeking knowledge, which tells us that we benefit from the story that uh, the Sahaba care for seeking knowledge so much to the point he took it from a shaitan. What do we learn from that? If a disbeliever gives you a piece of knowledge that is beneficial, take it. Don't say he's a disbeliever. If uh, someone you don't like or uh, uh, someone did not, uh, yani someone advised you in the wrong way, he did not follow uh, good advice or uh, yani he was embarrassing or he were belittling or whatever, as long as his advice is good and sound, Ignore the way he delivered it to you and accept it from him. Yani, take the truth from anyone, regardless uh, if they're good or they are bad. And Shaitan uh, told Abu Hurairah, Abu Hurairah accepted from a Shaitan, and no one can be uh, worse than the Shaitan. Uh, also, we learn from this one that Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they immediately believe the Prophet ﷺ words and act upon it. As soon as the Prophet ﷺ told him, he will come again, he said, I promise he won't come, he will come again, Abu Huraira immediately said, and I knew he will come. Because the Prophet ﷺ doesn't lie, and the Sahaba radiallahu take every word from the Prophet ﷺ as the truth. Uh, also, we learned that the scholars have high status. And if you don't know something, you go to the scholars. When he uh, wanted to uh, carry the penalty on, 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 on the shaitan, he took him, or he was planning to take him to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now... I want uh, to tell you a final thing on, on those benefits uh, we can add to it. Make sure that children are not outside playing at Maghrib time. Yani outside playing like if you are in the house, in the yard or in the backyard or in front of the house, put them inside until a little after dark, because this is rush hour for shayateen. Shayateen work is at night, main job. Just like we go to uh, our jobs during the day, they go to their main jobs at night. Of course, they, you know, they work all shifts, but night is the most because you can actually feel it. All the sins or the majority of the sins are committed at night. And if you talk about alcohol, if you talk about clubs, if you talk about uh, shows, if you talk about everything is at night. And that supports the idea that shayateen are everywhere inciting people to uh, do evil and to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commit uh, uh, major sins. So you take the children inside because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that they can harm them. They can harm them, they can harm them especially by possession or scaring them or doing anything. And also make sure that uh, you 
make ruqya for your children, for yourself and for your children. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu used to do that to Al-Hasan wal Hussein. He used to say, أُعِيذُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنِ اللَّامَّ Basically, I seek refuge uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from every shaitan and every harmful creature and every envious eye. Harmful creatures like snakes and scorpions and all of these spiders and everything, uh, especially at night because also those uh, insects or creatures, they also spread a lot at night more than the daytime. So make sure you do that. Now we know that uh, Surah uh, Ayat Al-Kursi is a description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know Kul Hu Allahu Ahad or Surah Al-Samad is the, uh, yani the uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when the pagans asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us he waited until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that surah that describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ayatul Kursi also does the same thing. So both of them talk about what? Tawheed. Tawheed which is the first obligation on us and the last obligation on us. Yani you start with Tawheed and you want to end your life with Tawheed. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die but on the state of Islam. How do you die in the state of Islam? You live Islam until death comes to you. You will die on Tawheed. Today I want to give you a short story here, inshallah, before we conclude. Uh, this is uh, an experiment that a teacher did to uh, demonstrate the importance of Tawheed to the students. Uh, in college, this uh, teacher or this instructor delivered this lecture to show them how important Tawheed is and he was actually uh, referring for them, not Tawheed, it wasn't uh, يعني, uh, a religious instructor, uh, he was uh, trying to show them how to manage time. But when we learn it, we learn it on Tawheed the way he did it. He basically brought a bucket and he put it on the table and he brought many of the rocks, small and big, uh, and sand. He has sand. Uh, very tiny pebbles, bigger pebbles, and stones. Or you could say يعني, big uh, rocks, يعني, a little bit bigger. So he start putting the rocks in the bucket, one after the other, until he filled it to the top. Then he asked a question to the students. Is the bucket full? One of the students said, yes. He said, are you sure? Watch this. So he took a bag of small pebbles and he poured it and it started going in between the rocks until it came, it came to the top. So all the spaces were full. Then he asked one more question. He asked the students, he said, is the bucket full? That the, the students, all of them, they said, yes. Well, except one, he said, maybe not. So the teacher locked that answer. So he pulled a small bag that has sand in it. And he poured it over and it went in between all the tiny rocks and everything until it filled the, the bucket all the way. Then he asked another question, is the bucket full now? 
Now all the students said, yes, it is full. He smiled. Is it full? No way. You got that? Wow, Vasha Allah. You didn't know that, right? I was guessing it. You were guessing it? Subhan I didn't mention water or saying anything. Ah. Yes, he smiled and he brought a vessel that has water and he poured it. Now is it full? Full. Don't tell me you bring gas now. <laughs> I will not go. Then he asked him, what do you learn from this experiment? One of the students said enthusiastically, he said, مَهْمَا كَانَ جَدْوَلُ الْمَرْءِ مَلِيئًا بِالْأَعْمَالِ فَإِنَّهُ يَسْتَطِيعُ عَمَلَ الْمَزِيدِ and I remember he was uh, uh, management class, time management class, business management. He was teaching them. So he was doing that experiment for them. So he asked the student, what did you learn from this? He said, it doesn't matter how busy your schedule is, you have time to add something to it. Do you agree? A lot of people say, I'm too busy, I can't. But if they stop and think, they can. Now, what is this relating to Tawheed? Tawheed is easy. If you come and you put yani, uh, your objective in this life, what's your objective in this life? Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have Tawheed, the basis for everything, the rocks, then everything will be shaky. You have to start with it. Yeah, they, let's say that we started with sand and water and all that. Can we put the rocks? We can. And the same thing here. When you want to seek knowledge, a lot of people, just about almost everywhere, they focus on stories. They focus on, uh, yani, uh, uh, akhlaq, a lot. This is not to belittle akhlaq, but if I come and tell you be honest and be and be and be and be, and you have no idea who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no idea what's your purpose in this life, no idea what do's and don'ts, at the very easiest trial, you flip upside down. You disbelieve in everything you get angry at everything and you will not stand. Why? Because you don't have anything to stand on. Prophet Lut alayhi salam, even, even at calamities, when you have the tawheed and you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain things may shock you too much and not even remember. Yani, uh, uh, teacher was bringing his parrot to the class all the time and he was teaching Tawheed he was teaching Aqidah, Creed now when I say Tawheed I'm, I'm referring to the pillars of Iman believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believing in the books believing in the uh, angels believing in the day of judgment believing <coughs> in the prophets and believing in the <coughs> predestiny he was teaching that he brings his parrot with him to class now when he teaches, he mentions La ilaha illallah a lot. What do you expect? He learned it. So his bird says La ilaha illallah a lot. One time he came to class, very sad, without the bird. 
the students ask, teacher, what happened to your bird? What happens to your, uh, what do you call it? Parakeet? <laughs> what happened to it? He said, well, I went out yesterday and I came back and I found out my cat killed it. So they started laughing. And he was yeah, he's sad. He was really sad and they felt bad and they said, Teacher, what's the big deal? I mean, we can get you many birds. Relax. He said, I'm not really sad because I lost the bird. I'm sad because the only word he knows is La ilaha illallah. And when he got attacked by the cat, he did not mention it once. You know what he was saying, right? Brother, what does a bird do? Eek, eek. <laughs> he did everything except what he always says, La ilaha illallah. Now here is the catch. This is why it made him sad. Because he said, and I am teaching La ilaha illallah all the time. And it came to my mind when I saw this. Am I going to be able to say La ilaha illallah when the angel of death comes to me? It's worth reflecting, I'm telling you. A lot of people do things and we don't know how sincere we are. We do our best, but we still don't know. We don't know if we are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or showing up. Many people don't do it right. Many people don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way uh, he deserves to be known by his beautiful names and attributes, by the names and attributes that he taught us and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about. So you may be thinking that you're going to say la ilaha illallah but may Allah forbid maybe even when someone tells you to say la ilaha illallah at time of death you will not say that and and you know, many people witness that uh, you know, one person when he was told to say la ilaha illallah he started singing now you can tell what he was doing in his life and uh, this is also a, uh, I'm going to give you an advice. This is also dangerous. Yani for those people who are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the time of death, just like you can't say la ilaha illallah, you would be saying what you were doing all the time. And who says the same thing or does the same thing close to that if you were to go to an operation? When you are injected with the, what do you call it, Shea? Painkiller? No, no, the other one. Anesthesia. anesthesia, yes. When you are under anesthesia, you will be talking what you have. Yeah, it happened to me. And I woke up on it, and I was go. That was close. <laughs> My wife was there, so <laughs> brother. <laughs> so, if this is in this life, you can. It can happen. Your dreams. It can happen everywhere, and that is. That is the same thing. And if you think about something all the time, you learn it all the time, you hear it all the time, you practice it all the time, you're going to do it at the time of death. You're going to do it in your dreams. You're going to do it when you are under anesthesia. Similar to a person came and told the Sheikh, I want to see Prophet Muhammad wasallam real bad. Advise me. He told him how bad you want to see him. He said, I'll do anything to see him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told him, come to my house and we'll fix it. Inshallah, you will see him today. So he came. 
يعني remember anything you do you have to have sincerity you have to يعني commit yourself doing this to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the sunnah so he came to him and he served him dinner the sheikh extremely salty you have to finish everything he finished it no water no drinking water all night ate all the salty food no drinking water go to sleep in the morning you will be telling me inshallah about your dream that you saw prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he went to sleep dying of thirst cannot wait for the morning to drink morning came sheikh went to him yes inshallah you saw prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said no i did not he told him any dreams he said yes he said what did you dream he said oh i was dreaming i was swimming in the ocean <laughs> and i was swimming rivers raining everywhere water everywhere so the sheikh looked at him and he said if you think of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way you thought about water you will see him you went to sleep your mind is so dedicated and focused on water you saw water and this is a fact this is truth in fact if you make your last word before you fall asleep like you're sitting in your bed going to sleep just before if you're dozing off before that read the last few ayat two or three i don't remember exactly or the last page of surah al-kahf and put in your mind what time you want to wake up you will wake up at that time i tried and i was thinking and there's no hadith for that or anything that to support it but i was wondering why because they say the last thing you think about before you fall asleep somehow uh, you wake up at that uh, yani you you have a dream about it or you wake up but subhanallah uh, it happens other times where i'm not sleepy i'm i'm not sleeping enough like let's say you stay till 2 a.m. and you have a doctor appointment at 5 and you 2 or 3 hours and you're worried so much about waking up and you set your alarm at 4:30 oh my god how can i wake up in 2 hours i'm very sleepy and tired and everything guess what you will wake up just before the alarm again it happened many times why because i go to sleep thinking too much about that time and waking that time and you wake up it's not related to how sleepy you are or not subhanallah uh the thing that you think about so if you ever want to see prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam check out and see how much you think about it and maybe hamza will see him out of <laughs> hamza likes swimming but <laughs> inshallah you will see that so yeah i'm i'm not belittling uh talking about things that softens your heart talking about death and all of that uh manners or teaching that but we have to understand that tawhid is number one thing that we need to learn and that's why i talk so much about it and i include it in everything i i speak because if you don't have that uh, you know tawhid is like the roots of the tree even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared it to the palm tree he said the palm tree is very firm in the base and the fruit of it is all outside that's exactly tawhid tawhid is very firm and the fruit of it the akhlaq everything comes from that and that is why uh, 
if you have a tornado or anything like that, palm trees are the strongest to stay there even though they would lose the branches. But the base is there. Same thing here. If you have to wait and you understand it firm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute creator, sustainer, provider, ruler, and he is the one who gives life and death, can benefit and harm, and you know his names and attributes and you use it and you call upon him by it, you affirm every good quality and negate every negative quality, and you direct all of your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guaranteed at times of calamity, you may cry, you may lose your money, you may lose your family, you may, you may, you may, but you will not lose your religion. And a lot of people, when they have calamity, they lose their religion because they say kufri things, yani that makes them kafir. Like they may even question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are you doing this to me? What did I do? I don't deserve this. So this, this means you're, you're doubting the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you have the correct aqidah, it will protect you. That's why you see Abu Bakr Siddiq, for instance, when the Prophet sallallahu uh, died, he is, he, all of his life with the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi he loves him more than he loves himself. No one loves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi more than him. Umar ibn Khattab loves him too. But Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an is not as strong in faith as Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Umar ibn Khattab was warning people from saying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu died. He couldn't, he was so shocked. He forgot even the Quran that says that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi going to die. But when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu came, he entered and calmly and collectively he kissed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him as for the death that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you have tasted it <coughs> and you will not have uh, this death again and you are so sweet alive and so sweet dead and he came out and he told people gather up <coughs> and he told people any one of you who used to worship Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's dead. And anyone who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living. This is aqidah. This is tawheed. This is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, Umar ibn al-Khattab collapsed. Radiallahu anhu. He couldn't, his knees couldn't hold him. He said, wallahi, because Abu Bakr al-Siddiq recited the ayah. Qawlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ If he dies or if he is killed, you're going to convert and become a disbeliever? Uh, he's going to die. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he said, as if this is the first time I heard this ayah, because of the shock. So the same thing here, as a believer, if you don't, yani all of you, I, I strongly advise you to get a booklet that talks you and make sure you understand the pillars of Iman and make sure you understand the pillars of Islam at least and understand why you're here because if you don't have the faith that uh, drives you to work and the faith that protects you from this universe from dunya, from shayateen, from evil people, uh, from evil friends, then you know, associating yourself, if you go with someone who's not that good, who's going to protect you? Yourself is against you. Yourself desires everything haram and wants to do it. Your friend calls you to it. Who's going to stop it? It's only your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Get yourself a booklet. Uh, personally, I recommend that book, which is a New Muslim Guide. Even though it's for non-Muslims, but you fit that category. Right? Maybe you're a little bit ahead, but <laughs> not much. <laughs> so, 
If you read that booklet, it's deep. It is brief, but it is deep. Guide to New Muslim, or New Muslim Guide. And this book is uh, in, it's in, it's a PDF. You can download it, and it is in Arabic, it is in English, it is in Spanish, and probably even in some other uh, languages. Uh, it's very good if you really read it and understand it, it gives you the foundation, and inshallah you go to Jannah. If you read it and understand it and practice it, it is, it is very comprehensive. Yani I, I taught it, and I actually I was thinking about teaching it here too. But uh, you know, th this because this will will take you all throughout the journey briefly, I and mean, it starts with the, the five necessities. Then it talks about uh, our existence here, the purpose of our creation, and then it goes smoothly: pillars of iman, pillars of Islam, and it talks about manners, talks about uh, Quran, everything, everything. It's good. So maybe you take a look at it, reflect on it. And uh, give me your input, and inshallah, uh, if that interests you, maybe we can teach it here, inshallah, with uh, a little more depth. And uh, it's a PDF, you can you have it on your phone, you don't need to have a book, inshallah. It's called New Muslim Guide. Is it by Fahad Salim? Bakhti? Yes, yeah. It is uh, burgundy color. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's very nice. Tayyib, brothers, insha'Allah, uh, I conclude with this. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he said, uh, he started his book with the beginning of Revelation, Quran and Sunnah, and he ended his book with Tawheed. Quran and Sunnah, the beginning of his book Tawheed the end of his book you know what he said he said radiyallahu an yani uh, he said if you want to have your or if you want your last words to be la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah live by the revelation Quran and Sunnah. The beginning of the book, Quran and Sunnah, everything in between is all the Quran and Sunnah. Yani everything that you need to know, it's, it came to us through the Quran and the Sunnah. So if you live by the Quran and the Sunnah, you will, inshallah, die on <coughs> Tawheed. Any questions? Yeah, the, now his, the brother is asking a question about the 70,000 that the Prophet وسلم, said will enter the Jannah without accountability. And uh, when he gave their description, he said, Those who don't give ruqya and don't ask for ruqya, and they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a high level. Yani, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to take by means. And if you have so much trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you don't do that. Yani, you, you don't have to. This is not a wajib on you to do ruqya or to have ruqya. Yani, look, look. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of their affairs. And there was a, 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 a story, and it's a long story, I don't want to get in it, but a person borrowed some money from another person and agreed on a certain time to return it. 
And he asked him, uh, who's your witness? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our witness. And who is your wakil? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our wakil. So he accepted it, that man. And when the time comes to pay, he was at the other side of the river, and he cannot cross, and there is no ship or anything to, to, send, his, uh, to send the money for that person. And he promised him. Probably have a friend. Did he do that, <laughs> or does he care if he gives it to you on time or not? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, people nowadays uh, their trust and their promise and uh, are so cheap. I you know, we laugh at it, but it's not really funny. And you know, when you loan someone or when you borrow money from someone and you tell him, "I'll give it to you in a week," make sure in a week that person receives it. Make sure in a week if you don't have it, you call him before the week and you arrange with him what to do and why or not or whatever. It's not like oh, life goes on until a week passes, two weeks, one month. Then he has to come and beg you for it and ask you and yani, uh, may Allah forbid. Uh, this is bad. So anyway, he was on the, uh, uh, yani on the shore of that uh, river and the time came. So he took a log and he put the money inside the log and he threw it in the uh, river and he said oh Allah I took you as a wakil and I took you as a witness send that money to that person and subhanallah the person was waiting on the other side of the river for the time expected. And he keeps seeing a log coming to the shore and going back, coming and going, coming and going. And he waited, waited, waited. That person did not show up. So to himself, he said, well, let me take that log and make some fire. When he took the log, he broke it. There is the money and the note. And he got his money. So uh, this is an authentic story. And this is how reliance and trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it does that. So yani the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, if they were to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change the mountain to gold, he will do it subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how much confidence they have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one of the companions, his sister was going uh, to lose her hand because, trying to remember the story, uh, uh, I don't want to confuse the stories, but uh, basically uh, he swore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Sahabi, to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it's not going to happen to my sister. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran and saved it, saved his sister from it. This is his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, doing that. So uh, if you have that much trust, then you don't need to make a ruqya. And by the way, it's not 70,000. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, with every, uh, with everyone, another 70,000. Yani it's 70,000 times 70,000. That's a lot. That's 4,900 million. Billion? A hundred million is a billion, right? Now, that is how many people will enter without. Now? Thousand? Ah, oh, I don't know. What's a hundred million? No, no. A thousand is a trillion. Muhim, it's a big number, so inshallah you have hope. <laughs> Work on it, inshallah. I see when the Prophet did that, 
Okasha radiallahu anhu was present. And he said, O Prophet of Allah, make dua for me. So he told him, you are one of them. Another companion jumped up and he said, oh, yeah, me too. Too late. You snooze, you lose. Sabaka kabiha Okasha. Okasha was faster than you. And that is, uh, a lot of people have opportunities to do things, and they don't do it. And when they see someone did it, they remember. Uh, you should be alert all the time to take advantage. And the companions, radiallahu anhum, used to pay too much attention to them. Any questions? Have you ever seen communication between the room? Like, seen it yourself? Somehow, you know, the video that you just showed is also correct, but like, if you know what I'm trying to... Communication, like normal? Like, could... like cause you said it's possible to talk to the room. What's, a, what's like a... No, usually, usually the, the reason they're talking is because you're reading on them, and the Quran burns them. But that's that's when it's possessing a person. What if it's not? What if they're not? Then you have to do something to make him present. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's that's haram. You don't do that. All right, no, I was just like. What yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, that's 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 what uh, people actually, uh, Subhanallah. Uh, when I came to United States, uh, I was living with uh, many students were living together. One of the brothers, he goes in a room, and I don't know Miramiya. You know what Miramiya is? Yeah. The the flavor uh, that you put in tea. Anyway, we have so much of it usually. You know, he used to take that and many other things and. Uh, you open his room, it is 100% smoke. From that, he burns things. And he used to do that. And he actually asked if you want to come. I said, A'udhu Billah, Mr. Shayate. Stay there. So they do that. You have to do things. You have to read things. You have to commit haram. You, uh, a lot of things. Anybody who deals with jinn in this way is extremely major sin. This is horrible. So that's the only way you can communicate with them. What's like the, like, I, I know obviously the process itself is tough, but like, what is it like, do you like say stuff, or I don't know, like, how, how, do, how does it, the, how does it form like a conversation between, like, uh, into a Zoom? How, how they what? Like, how does the conversation form like between, into a Zoom? You just ask. I mean, you know, the, the way the way the way I was I was reading Quran, and he was fighting and everything. And I screamed at him and I said, "What's your name?" He told me his name. Why are you here? You, know, you just just like you're fighting with a a person. It's not like uh, uh, you need some. No, no, you you screaming, and you threatening him. You threaten him. You don't tell me the truth. I'm going to continue reading. And the more you're reading, you go crazy because he cannot. He cannot handle the, the reading. It burns him. Yeah, and the Quran literally burns him. And you, uh, alhamdulillah, I mean, I don't deal with that, but uh, it just happened. Why you have jinn? You want to talk to them? No, I'll, no, no, no. I was just wondering. Like, you want to witness someone doing it? No, no. I, I just saw a video of someone who got arrested in Mecca. Like near near the Kaaba, and he was in a ihram, and in his ihram he had like some beauty dolls and stuff. And I was like, kind of thinking about that, like how does that work, you know? Mm. But you know. Ayo Sheikh Hussein. يا الله جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم. ورحمة الله وبركاته. أستلبيستا.